So we are now going to begin discussing the statement of cash flows. So the statement of cash flows, let me just fix this. I don't want no. The statement of cash flows basically is something we talked about at the very beginning of chapter one or in chapter one. Cash gets reported on the balance sheet where you just see a snapshot of the cash balances at the end of the period. Then there's another statement called the statement of cash flows where we are going to in detail report the cash receipts and cash payments during the period. As we talked about the first week, we divide all transactions into three types of activities. They can be operating activities, investing activities, or financing activities. Operating activities have everything to do with the running, the normal course of why the company's in business. Cash transactions for revenues and expenses. And as you see here, cash received from customers, cash paid for rent, utilities, supplies, and salaries. Next, we have investing activities, which relates to the buying and the selling of long-term assets, period. Investing has to be buying and selling long-term assets and investment securities. Investment securities are considered assets. Examples, purchase and sell of land, equipment, and buildings. Then, finally, financing activities only deal with borrowing money, paying money back, and anything to do with shareholders issuing stock and paying dividends. That's it. So we're going to look at these different transactions and decide is cash involved. If cash is involved, it's going to be a part of our statement of cash flows. If cash isn't involved, we're going to let it alone. We're not going to bother with it. So when we sell shares of common stock for 25000 to obtain the funds necessary to start the business. Is cash involved? Yes. When we borrow 10000 from a local bank and sign a note, cash is involved. When we purchase equipment for giving golf lessons, cash is involved. When we pay one year of rent in advance, cash is involved. But when we purchase supplies on account, cash isn't involved there, is it? Therefore, we're not going to involve that transaction in the statement of cash flows the way we're handling this right now. When we provide golf training to customers for cash, is it involved? But what if we provide golf training to customers on account? Cash isn't involved there. When we receive cash in advance, we pay salaries to employees and we pay dividends. Cash is involved in all of those items and ultimately becomes a part of our statement of cash flows. So based on these transactions, you will see the statement of cash flows for operating activities involve receipts from customers for training, and then in, those are inflows. Outflows for operating would involve salaries and rent. Investing deals with buying and selling long-term assets. The only thing we have here for investing is the purchase of equipment, which is a minus 24000 From financing, the issuing stock, borrowing money from a bank, and paying dividends, all are activities or cash inflows and outflows related to financing. So our net increase in cash during the period is going to just be adding these up. 
minus 3,900 minus 24,000 plus 34,800 gives us a net increase in cash of $6,900. Since we didn't have a beginning balance because it's a brand new company, we just show the cash at the end of the period is 6,900. And that amount is what's going to show up on our balance sheet. Okay? Which of the following items would be categorized as an investing activity on a statement of cash flows? Investing. A, borrowed money from the local bank. That's financing. B, paid for supplies and cash. That's operating. C, paid for the purchase of equipment using cash. Yes, that is it. So, we're going to look at cash holdings and just see how we can compare cash to non-cash. We're looking at Regal Entertainment versus Cinemark. Regal Entertainment here shows cash and cash equivalents of 147.1 in millions. Non-cash is 2,392 million. So their cash in relation to their non-cash is 6.1 percent. Cinemark is 638.9 million and then non-cash of 3,513 million. So their cash to their non-cash is at 18 percent. Now if you look over the period of time, their operating cash flows show they're pretty consistent here, aren't they? Regal's sitting at in the 350 mark. Cinemark is 390. All of a sudden jumps up to 638. Now, honestly, I can't tell you much right now just based on this, but one thing we do know, let's ask this. Which of the following statement is true? A, having too much cash Cash can represent idle resources that are not being used to produce revenues. Is that true? Yeah. One way to assess cash holdings is to compare cash assets to non-cash assets. True. In recent years, cash holdings have increased tremendously. That's true, too. All the above are true. Now, one thing, and, you know, I don't truly know much about this um, industry, but I do know that the movie industry is really taking a hit lately, isn't it? Because we're all into Netflix. We're all, you know, we're just, how many of you guys go and see movies like you used to? You do? I think it seems as though this economy is starting, this industry sector is starting to hurt. So why Cinemark has this cash, I'm not real sure right now. I mean, and I don't even want to speculate. Have they sold a lot and they're just sitting some, somewhere with some cash? Are they prepared for a rainy day? And that's why, I don't know. But just because someone has a lot of cash doesn't necessarily mean they're being resourceful with their assets. Because cash just sitting in a bank really doesn't get you much far. But cash sitting in a bank when you need it to pay bills is a smart decision. And because of our economy being in a tough place over the past 8 to 10 years, people are holding more cash than they ever used to. Because when you need it, you better have it, right? Okay, let's look at, you have problem 4A in your paperwork, so that's the, what we're going to do, 4-5-A, not 4-5-B. And you'll also be happy to know that 4-5-A is in your homework. So the only one that I did not do a lecture on for you guys is 4-5-A. Four, five, a Rocky owns and operates Balboa's Gym located in Philadelphia. The following transactions occur for the month. 
Now the first thing we are going to do is record each one of these transactions. Okay? We cool? October 2nd, received membership dues for the month of October totaling $8,500. What are we going to do there? Would we debit cash 8500 credit service revenue for 8500? October 5th. October 5th, we issue common stock in exchange for cash, $12,000. Think about it. What are we going to debit? What do we credit? Perfect. Debit cash, credit common stock. Next, October 9th, purchase additional boxing equipment for $9,600, paying one half of the amount in cash and the other one half due by the end of the year. What do we debit? We debit equipment. What do we credit? Two credits. Cash and accounts payable. Debit equipment, 9600 Credit cash, 4800 Credit accounts payable. 4800 October 12th, pay $1,500 for advertising regarding a special membership rate available during the month of October. We debit to advertising expense. We credit credit cash, $1,500. October 19th, pay dividends to stockholders, 4400 Debit, credit, we credit cash, we pay dividends. Debit dividends, credit cash. Okay, next, pay liability insurance to cover accidents to members for the next six months starting November 1st, $6,900. We debit, prepaid, we credit, cash. October 25th, receive cash in advance for November's memberships. We debit cash, we credit deferred revenues. October 30th, we receive but do not pay utility bills for the month 5200. Debit, utilities expense, credit, utilities payable. Is cash involved in that one? No. So it's debit, utilities expense, credit, utilities payable. Or accounts payable. I would have said accounts payable, but the book said utilities payable. Next, pay salaries for the month, 7300 We debit, salaries expense, credit, cash. Which transactions involve cash? Pretty much all of them. 
except the utilities and a portion of that equipment piece, right? It's, to my what? I don't want y'all to do that yet, okay? Let's wait on that cash thing a sec, okay? I'll, I'll put it up. So basically, the, identify the transactions involving cash. Pretty much all of them except the payables, utility payables. Now it says, number three, assuming the balance of cash at the beginning of October is 16600 post each cash transaction to the cash T account and compute the ending cash balance. So this is what I've done here, guys. It's telling us at the beginning of the period, the balance, bless you, was 16600 so where it says October 1st, I could also say beginning balance, okay? Then I want you to go to each of these transactions. On October 2nd, cash was debited 8,500. So do you see here I have a debit to cash of 8,500? Do you see then, if we go to the next one, October 5th, cash was debited for 12000 What did I do? I show here, October 5th, a debit to 12000 On October 9th, cash was credited for 4800 Do you see over here, I show a credit 4800 What I'm doing is only interested in this cash account. I'm taking each of these transactions and I'm debiting or crediting cash alone. October 12th, cash got credited for $1,500. October 19th, cash got credited for $4,400. October 22nd, cash got credited for $6,900. October 25th, what happened to cash? Debited for 5600 And then October 31st, cash got credited for 7300 Just the cash just the cash. So if we debit, if we total our debits, we total our credits and we subtract them, we should end up with a cash balance of 17,800. Okay? Are we good? Do you want me to spend more time just sitting here so you guys can get this in? Okay. Now, it says, prepare a statement of cash flows for the month of October, properly classifying each of the cash transactions into operating, investing, and financing activities. So what I want to do is let's just look at these. On October 2nd, when we, we receive membership dues, is that an operating, financing, or investing? Operating. When we issue common stock in exchange for cash, what is that? Financing. When we purchase equipment, investing. When we pay 1500 for advertising, operating. What if we pay dividends to stockholders? Financing, pay liability insurance, operating, receive cash in advance for November memberships, operating. Guys, October 30th, we're not going to do a thing because cash was not involved at all. October 31st, when we pay salaries, operating. So we need to create 
a statement of cash flows. So the standard statement of cash flows involves, we always start with operating activities first. The cash inflows will only be from customers. And the cash outflows are exactly what we just talked about, related to advertising, insurance, and salaries. That's why the company's in business. So we show our inflows versus our outflows gives us net cash flows from operating activities here of a minus Then we look through all of our investing activities, but we really only have one, purchasing equipment, which makes our net cash flows a minus $4,800. Then our financing cash flows related to the issuance of common stock, which is a positive. Payment of dividends is a cash outflow. Gives us net cash from financing activities. Of $7,600. The way we determine the net increase of cash is we take the combination of, excuse me, the minus 1600, minus 4800, plus 7600 to give us a net increase in cash of $1,200. To complete this cash flow statement, it asks us cash at the beginning of the period. Remember it gave us that information, 16,600. Cash at the end of the month shows 17,8. And guys, we know we're right because when we reconciled our cash T account, didn't it show 17.8 also? Sure. So we know our beginning balance was 16.6. We went through every transaction to come up with our ending cash balance. That ending cash balance will show up in the bank's the balance sheet. No, the, this is just the cash shown up in the balance sheet. Now, this balance of cash in the balance sheet has to equal the cash at the end of the month. And you see it does, doesn't it? So we know, you know how relationships among financial statements? This shows the relationship among the financial statement. The cash at the beginning of the month is going to show the, literally, the bank, uh, the cash balance on the balance sheet from the previous period. The cash at the end of the month will show what's on the bank statement 
of this period. Yes. This 1200 is just the changes during the period. Oh, okay. All the transactions during the period. Oh, so that's just like transfer. Well, this is just taking the minus 1600, the minus 4800, plus the 7600. That gives us our net increase in cash right here. You'll see on the homework problems, and I've gone through this statement of cash flows real specific for you that you're going to show a net increase in cash or a net decrease in cash, whichever way it rolls. If it ends up being a minus number, it's a net decrease in cash, right? You take the beginning cash, and in this case, our cash at the end of the month will always equal our balance sheet account or we've done something wrong, okay? Any questions on anything we have covered tonight?